I played Black Desert Online when it first released to Western markets back in 2017. I played it for around 250 hours, which is generally considered no time at all for an MMO, but it was still a lot of time for me. During this time span, I probably had one of my core memories in gaming, period. You see, me and my friends had all bought the game together, and by the tail end of everything, only one other friend had actually remained. The game was just too grindy. Only me and one other friend had even been able to get our awakening weapons, which took about 200 hours. But that wasn't actually the core memory. No, it was the fact that I had spent 200 hours playing in this world, grinding, exploring, having fun, and I hadn't even seen the namesake of the game. Now me and my one friend who had bothered to try and stick with the game through the grind were a little curious, so we decided to embark on an adventure. We bought the necessary things required and journeyed through a large canyon until, well, we saw this. A massive, sprawling desert. Did it live up to the hype? Kind of, but we did find a random magical portal, walked into it, and died almost immediately. Journeying through that desert, having never seen it before, having never experienced something like that in a game ever, was special. I've never played a game that makes you play for 200 hours just to have the privilege to experience heat stroke. It was amazing. The reason why this moment felt so special is because this desert, the city that sat on the other side of the desert, not just anyone could get to it. You had to put in the time, put in the effort to experience a place that most of my friends weren't able to. And then, after experiencing this special moment, which was going to push me to the very end of an MMO for the first time ever, I looked up what kind of PV dungeons there were and learned that the game had a PvP endgame. Let's see what this game is about. This game contains PvP. I never played the game again. Until now. Hi everyone, my name is Acrylicat, and welcome to... I'm gonna call them overviews. Is that good with everyone? Overview? Fine? Good? Fantastic. Welcome to my overview of Black Desert Online. I should probably mention I don't play MMOs. In fact, they're probably one of my least played games ever along with sports games. That's not to say I've not tried to play MMOs, I've been all around. I remember trying to play Free Realms as a kid, I attempted to play Rift, Terra, Guild Wars 2, Swator. The thing about most MMOs is that they don't really... What's a good way to put this. Their gameplay is very terrible. In fact, all the games that I just listed have about the same combat system in the sense that you click on an enemy and press number buttons on your keyboard for abilities until they die. And that was my issue with MMOs, they all played similarly. And on top of the similarity, it's not exactly an in-depth system you got going on there. So, imagine my surprise when I find out that there's an MMO hitting the market with a very well-executed combat system. Well, when it did hit Steam, I played that motherfucker for 250 hours. If you asked me about the story of BDO back then, I couldn't tell you. I skipped all of it. I wanted to get to the combat as fast as possible. It was very fun. Tremendously fun. Obviously, though, when I found out what the game was peddling for its endgame, I stopped playing. I didn't see a point in playing the game anymore. The game is still popular, so there's definitely a market for the PvP in this game, but it's not for me. I started playing again because I was told that the awful grind in the early game was removed and it was generally a lot easier to get into. They also added their first PvE dungeon, so that's the reason why I came back, so I could test the waters. And let me tell you, I had fun. I had a lot of fun. But before we get into all that, I should probably tell you what Black Desert Online even is. 
Black Desert Online is a Korean-based grinder MMORPG developed by Pearl Abyss. BDO is very special due to the fact that it's the only MMO in existence to actually have good combat. Either way, the game was released for Western audiences back in 2016 and has since supported an active player base. It's been continually updated with new features which mostly come in the form of new classes to play. Along with combat, its other main draw are all the life skills which you can lose yourself in becoming the best at many different activities that litter the game world. Almost all of these activities are ways to make money, which is pretty much the core need for players in BDO. That mostly summarizes the game in a neat little knot. Now we get to talk about the best part of the game. Can you guess what I think that is? Black Desert Online hosts a combat system unlike any others found in MMOs. In fact, the combat is unlike other games in general. It's just that fucking good. I think the closest games which have similar systems are probably fighting games, but even then it's iffy. They are straight up making a single player game with this combat system. That is how good it is. It's fast paced action combat with an emphasis on comboing into other attacks. The idea for most classes is that you're always moving and flowing into your next attack until your enemy is dead. The better you are at your character, the more combos you know, how well certain abilities flow into one another and the like, the more effective you will be in combat. In fact, for many characters, the better you combo your attacks, the more damage you will end up dealing. The combat alone is reason enough to play this game. I would constantly make new characters back when I first played, and I've been doing the exact same thing just now to experience the different ways combat can be done. Each character is different and unique in a fantastic way. Most of the footage I got for BDO is when I played through the game as a character called Shy, which is pretty unfortunate because they're probably the least complex combat character. They're supposed to be played as a life skill character and a support character. I played them so I could do this. We're gonna get back to this later, this is an important point for the video. Either way, combat is fast, fluid, and mesmerizingly fun. It's probably the perfect combat you could ask for in a third-person action RPG. It's also challenging, which is a good thing. Many games, MMOs included, will attempt to lure you into a false sense of power fantasy. In the beginning of a lot of games, they attempt to make you feel very strong, but in many cases this backfires tremendously due to the fact that the game feels very easy and that that sense of challenge isn't there for the vast majority of the game until an absurd difficulty spike is hit, and when that happens it just feels unfair. In many games, that wall is an attempt to make you buy things, and luckily Black Desert Online doesn't really have a wall. Okay, so it kind of does have a wall, but it's so far ahead and really only stops you from doing PvP. Like any good game, there is a curve, and the game does its job in walking you along that path, so when you are let loose into the world without your hand being held, you understand how to make sure your strength is up to par. BDO is at least honorable in the sense that you don't really have to spend money to get past a difficulty wall. We're gonna be talking about this later, but yeah, the combat is really fucking good. Now, MMOs are usually known for their worlds, and if they aren't, well, they're not gonna be remembered. What's in here? Oh, it's just your demise. <laughs> Black Desert Online's world is massive. It hosts a gargantuan continent, which probably takes a real-life hour to walk from one end to the other. Travel can obviously be sped up with the use of mounts. There's also an ocean, which is pretty much as big as the continent itself. There are entire communities nestled within BDO which pride themselves on living on the ocean. Traversing the high seas and killing sea monsters is generally a way to play this game. I will definitely say that the design of the world is not very fantastical, which isn't a bad thing. The graphics, while spectacular, attempt to portray the world more realistically, so while there are locations in this game which are absolutely gorgeous, like the Black Desert which the game gets its name from, the world you're exploring is going to look a lot like a medieval version of our world. But wait, because Black Desert does my favorite thing that you can do in a fantasy world, period. The majority of the world is littered with realistic geography, realistic mountains, realistic forests, a realistic ocean. The world is going to look beautiful in the way that nature in real life looks beautiful. This is a commendable route to go down when creating a game, but just because most of the world has realistic geography doesn't mean it's all realistic geography. There are just some places in this world which are high fantasy through and through. Impossible geography, which is stunning to look at, and this is what I mean when I say it's my favorite thing. These impossibly stunning vistas and fantastical views are nowhere near the most traveled parts of the continent. You have to explore to find this stuff. The fantastical nature of the setting is something you actually have to find yourself, which is one of the most commendable things you can do in a game because that means the developers have the willpower to hold back on shoving the most beautiful scenery down players' throats. Pearl Abyss understands the phrase, good things come to those who wait. If you see Black Desert far enough, it will reward you. So yeah, I'd probably say that the world design is pretty okay. Now, I generally like to gush about how good things are, but I like talking about bad stuff too. And trust me when I say, if I only had good things to say about BDO, I would not be making this video. We're going to be easing into the negative stuff, starting off with something positive that turns negative, which is the character design. 
The mechanical and general aesthetic design of characters is one, a mixed bag, and two, very subjective. There are characters that I find unfun to play in this game, and I actually think that to be a good thing. Large variations between classes make sure that each class doesn't feel too similar and also gives players a lot of choice in terms of playstyle. Some people really like being tanks, which fits certain characters like the Berserker and the Dark Knight, while other people like more glass cannon style characters like the Sorceress and the Ninja. Some people enjoy the ranged DPS playstyle, while others like to be up close and personal. There is plenty of choice within these avenues because each class feels unique. The only class archetype which hasn't been given love is the support class, and that's because the game hosts one. And that one is the totally not a child character we swear, Shy. You might have flap and the rich lady under your spell, but it's gonna take more than that to impress me. <laughs> Am I looking water? I do a backflip? She's the class that I have most of my footage on, and it is very specifically because I was researching how to play music in the game, and apparently, because Pearl Abyss can't make good game design without fucking it up somehow, the shy character is the only character in the game that's able to play music. Why am I not allowed to be a traveling bard as any character? Why make me suffer in that way? Black Desert, if you want to play instruments, forces you to awaken as a shy, which is not exactly a simple feat. You gotta do some shit to make it to level 56. Then there's also a grind to train your musician skill to be able to play any of the good songs. I know this is really mostly complaining, but I was pissed when I couldn't play the violin with my sorceress. I really wanted her to play the violin. I did eventually learn to like how the shy plays, even though she's a very simple character. Mostly because I really wanted to do this. <laughs> She's now my only current character who has reached level 56. Due to how much I enjoy the gameplay of Black Desert, I have experience with a bunch of other characters from back in the day and from ones I've played more recently. My main class is definitely the Sorceress. She was the only character I awakened back in 2017, which, remember, took 200 fucking hours, compared to maybe the 25-ish it took me now. And that time is pretty generous, seeing as though I actually read all the story stuff during my shy playthrough. We can talk about the story in a little bit, it's nothing to write home about. Overall, though, the Sorceress might be my favorite class in the game right now, but this leads me into something very important about the characters and classes. All of them, literally every single one of them, is gender-locked. This is actually just fucking stupid. There are classes which are literally just another class, but guy or girl. You have the wizard class, and then there's the witch class, the ninja, then the kunoichi, the archer, and the ranger. It's all pointless. Just have classes which aren't gender-locked. It makes sense for only like three classes in the entire game to even be gender-locked. These would be the Valkyrie, the Corsair, and that's only because she's a mermaid, and the Berserker, only because I have yet to see a female giant in the game. I actually don't think they <laughs> exist. I have never before seen a game with such in-depth character creation. Like, literally, the game has one of the most complex character creators I have ever seen before, and yet has made some of the worst decisions ever when it comes to character creation. Booba? Booba? Booby? Maybe this could be considered a nitpick, but I find the gender locking to be a huge tell to the oversights that Black Desert actually has. And with that talked about, now we get to talk about the story. Another mixed bag, albeit a very forgettable one. I would definitely say that the story to Black Desert is not bad, just very mediocre in almost every way imaginable. The plot is forgettable, the characters are basic, and the whole thing is entirely predictable. To put it bluntly, this is not a story you want to stick around for. With all that being said, there are a couple things which I did like. I don't think this used to be the case, but in the current game, you can choose different quest lines at different points in the story, which leads to traveling to entirely different places on the map. It doesn't get crazy complex, as it all leads back to the same place eventually, but even for people not paying attention to the plot, it still adds a level of replayability. You end up fighting different monsters and bosses, as well as experiencing a different portion of the story depending on which quest line you choose. Some of them are made more equal than others. For instance, the quest line I followed in my Shy playthrough had me fighting against the forces of darkness and killing a resurrected evil king by bringing the different elements of the world together. In my Sorceress playthrough, I was the pawn of a merchant family. One is obviously more exciting than the other. Hey! Too much fun. Is your phone broken? No. I've been trying to get a hold of you. Why? I was calling about your car fixing a warranty. The merchant one definitely has its cool moments in the form of moral ambiguity in the plot and great characters, but it doesn't exactly bring the kind of pizzazz you expect from fighting a king of darkness. There was no spoiler warning for this because we both know I'm the only human being alive who actually listened along to the story of this game. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that. So yeah, the story is very meh. Now, for our last mixed bag segment, we're gonna be talking about the most important thing? The grind. 
So obviously Black Desert has made many attempts over these past few years to heavily mitigate the amount of grinding a new player has to do to catch up with the veteran player base. The people who've been around since the game came out still have an absurd advantage which I can't even begin to comprehend, but getting to the general level is not exactly as difficult as it used to be. As an example, one which I have brought up before, this game took about 200 hours to achieve Awakening back in 2017. Maybe it was less, but I really have to go on my current Steam hours and the fact that I played two characters, only one of which actually awakened. In the present day, I've gotten three characters to around level 50, one of which is now level 58, and I've spent around 60 hours in the game. Around 35 to 40 of those hours have been on a single character, the Shy. That's a really big decrease in early to mid game grind. Now some people might think that lowering the grind is a good thing, I, you can get to the fun stuff faster. You're wrong. This might be the case for other MMOs, it's a slog to progress to the end game, the only thing which is fun, but in BDO, I'm having the most amount of fun before I hit level 56. Even back in 2017, that 200 hours was 200 hours well spent because the game is fun. It's actually the end game which seems to be lacking. Obviously, take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. I actually haven't been able to dive into the end game currently, and my knowledge of it comes from four years ago. On top of that, I hate the idea of PvP in Black Desert, so that end game is already off the table for me. With that said, two of the end games of BDO are the life skills and the nodes. Life skills are going to be brought up later in the negative portion of this video, but as for nodes, they're interesting. Nodes are all these locations on the map that you can hire workers to gather resources passively for you. Setting up your worker empire to gather rare materials for your life skill crafting requires a bachelor's degree. It might be fun for Wall Street businessmen, but not for me. If you need an entire YouTube tutorial series to explain how to correctly manage your nodes, something has gone wrong. Node management is one of the main ways to gain money if I remember correctly, basically having a good setup for when you make things with your life skills where the real dough of Black Desert is made. As far as I'm aware, the actual end game is split between PvP and capitalism, neither of which appeal to me. This is much more of a personal gripe compared to the other things wrong with this game, because if you like this stuff, then you might be excited to get into the end game, but I just want to beat the shit out of bosses and mobs. Doing that in the late game is more of a way to grind for the end game of life skills and PvP, which is unfortunate. And with all that said, now we get into the true negative of this game, the straight up horrible design that has been implemented into Black Desert. It's pay to win, it's a pay to win game. I bet there's gonna be people going, no it's not, it's not a pay to win game, it's pay for convenience. Pal, that's called pay to win. There are so many things about the monetization system which is crazy, and I get it, they wanna make money off the insane people who will spend $170,000 on the game, but it's still wild how much shit there is to buy. You can buy experience increase equipment, you can buy life skill increase costumes, you can buy things to help with upgrading equipment. If you're insane enough, there are certain items in the premium item shop you can sell on the in-game market for in-game currency. This basically means you can use real money to buy in-game silver. You can buy value packs, which just straight up make you more efficient for however long the pack lasts. You can buy pets, which make farming far more efficient, and they're generally a necessity. I will say with pets, you do seem to get a couple for free, but back when I played in 2017, not the case. I'm glad they're better about it now, but they were definitely not on top of it before. Overall, if you think it can be monetized, it is. There's really no way to get around that. The game luckily doesn't require you to pay for things like value packs to have a good time, but every time you log in, you get blasted with advertisements about different sales going on with the shop. It can get annoying. So, Black Desert Online is an MMO. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. I also don't think anyone would disagree with me saying that 80 to 90% of all players in the game are AFK. This is because of life skills. Combat is a heavy grind, but you still have to be at your computer to hit enemies. You don't have to be at your computer to fish, or haul goods around the map, or ride a horse back and forth in a single location, or craft for 15 hours straight. Having almost all of the life skills in this game AFK grindable really hurts the game world, and the reason why is because most of the people you see in the game aren't fucking there. It's unfortunate to know that the game has tens of thousands of people playing it at a given time, but since they're all AFK, BDO just feels empty. I'm trying to play an MMO, where's the fucking community? People talk in the group chat, but I have yet to have a single conversation with a living human who I can interact with and see in the game world. It's really sad, actually. The funny thing is that life skills could very easily make the game world alive and bustling if they weren't AFKable, because you'd see people doing things everywhere. Wouldn't it be so much more interesting if you knew that if you came across someone fishing in the wilderness, they were actually there at their computer? You could walk up to them and chat with them, interact with them. If you see someone hauling trade goods, you could walk up with them and talk with them. I don't see this as an idealized fantasy, this could actually be the game. BDO could be a world that's alive and bustling and moving, but everyone's AFK. 
The fact that AF Kang is baked into so many mechanics doesn't just help the world feel empty, it makes the world feel dead. One of the most disliked things about Black Desert Online is the way you upgrade your gear, it's RNG based. Now I'm not talking just about drop chance, because in broad terms drop chance RNG is fine, it gives items a sense of exclusivity and rarity while also making things replayable due to the rewards. No, I'm talking about the actual upgrading of your gear, your armor and weapons. You use these things called black stones to basically enchant your gear to make it more powerful. Items can be enhanced to a maximum of plus 20. The thing that is so hated about this mechanic is that as you enhance gear, the chances that it successfully enhances to the next tier becomes lower. And on top of that, every time you fail to enhance your gear, it loses maximum durability, which requires rare items to repair to its original state. And also, it gets worse. Once your gear reaches plus 17, when you fail to enhance it, it actually has a chance to lower its tier back to plus 16. I don't think I have to tell you how being able to literally lose progression for playing the game as intended is bad game design. The thing that's actually fucking hilarious about this whole system is that if you use the items that stop your equipment from lowering in tier, cron stones, you can't actually gain a higher chance at enhancing an item. I'm genuinely not doing justice explaining how this system works, but this shit literally requires an associate's degree in accounting and multiple spreadsheets to fully understand its inner working, so it's safe to say it's needlessly complex. Oh, and you can bet your ass you can pay to win the shit out of this system. My biggest issue with the whole gear enchant system is that it could be so much simpler without losing the pay to win aspect. Rather than making it RNG based, all you would have to do is make the higher tier gear require rarer materials to enhance. That's technically already a thing too, you need harder to obtain materials to enhance items past plus 15. Basically the entire system is bullshit, no one likes it, and if anyone says they do, they belong in a mental hospital. I hinted at this at the beginning of the video, but I do not like the idea of what you work towards in an MMO to be PvP. Actually, I think that's one of the worst ideas you can have. Obviously, this is a far more subjective viewpoint than I might not see eye to eye with others on, and that's okay. I just want to explain my thoughts and feelings on this subject, and they are as follows. If I wanted to play a PvP game, I would go play a game which has primarily PvP, like a battle royale. I'm a radiant smurf. <laughs> He's a Radiant Smurf. Here he goes, he's a Radiant Smurf. You're so ass and calm. Oh my god, get- <laughs> In a game like Black Desert, where gear score dictates whether you live or die against an enemy, not just a real player, why would I want to work towards an endgame full of people who have had the upper hand in pretty much every way? It also feels jarring to be doing one thing for the entire game, only to be told that the actual point of the game is the exact opposite. You do primarily PvE for your entire time with this game as long as you're sticking with the game's combat, but the end game is not PvE, it's actually PvP. I bet the PvP aspect appeals to certain people, but the entire reason I even stopped playing this game back in 2017 was because I learned it was a PvP-focused game. I realized that I wasn't going to be able to experience co-op dungeons that I had heard about from other MMOs with the only game whose combat actually got me excited for that experience. Obviously, that's changed since they seem to be adding more PvE to the game now. Still, the game feels like it's primarily focused around PvP and Guild Wars, which is unfortunate because the combat this game has best fits within a PvE design. Overall, I'm going to try and experience more of BDO. I haven't actually done it yet, but I'm looking to join an actual guild to see if I can experience any of that sweet, sweet MMO community. The game's fun, and I want to experience everything it has to offer, with the obvious exception of PvP. Maybe a little bit, just to see what it's like. I didn't mention it before, but I'm pretty sure Pearl Abyss has been unshackled from their previous publisher, which hopefully means the game is going to take a healthier direction. The entire reason I started playing again is because I saw news that they added a PvE dungeon into the game. I wanted to see what they were capable of doing with that. It's practically what I wanted from BDO anyways. If you're at the end of this video, I ask that you like and subscribe, all that good stuff you're supposed to ask as a YouTuber. I really want to see how far I can get doing this YouTube thing, I'm working on getting a little better every video, and I'm hoping that one day things just click and I'm actually able to make good content. I want to thank the three people who commented on my last video. You guys are great. I'm not a generally social person when on things like YouTube, I don't usually comment much on anything, but I did want to mention that you guys are seen and appreciated. I hope to see you all in the next one.